well. Silhouette. They look like a shadow of their former selves just then uh, on Vertigo. Inferno was a long distant memory. And now we get ready to head to train the third and final map in this best of three series. Uh, Able, you know, they're going to be running on the back of that momentum. They're going to be feeling good. But train for me is still a little bit up in the air. Yeah, we still, well, I mean, first of all, we haven't really figured out if if Silhouette's even going to be able to compete on a map that's not Inferno. Um, that was a bit that was a bit brutal on Vertigo, so we'll see. I I don't know. I think Silhouette's going to be done and dust from this one. I think the teamwork is going to be very, very strong for, for Able, uh, Able Esports. I mean, I think I'm a little bit biased because I actually saw Able Esports play yesterday. I, I still haven't seen anything of Silhouette, obviously, outside of this series right now. Um, so I just have a little bit more of a body to work with from them. Um, but still, I'd like to see this be a brawl. We've had two blowout maps, Harry. I want to see a close battle between the two teams. Let's get like a 16-12, 16-14 underway. Yeah, right? Like, I don't I don't want to come into this and just have it feel like, you know, you already know who's going to win at the end of the first half. I'm over that, man. I'm over it. Like, okay, yeah, we don't need it anymore. Get game. it out of here. I'm going to get on Vertigo, and then it was like, oh, I just don't, I want, I want trade. I'm, I'm just like you, Jason, man. I want this to be the best from both of these teams, and I want it to be close. It's all we ask for. I, I feel like it's not much. Um, we're not selfish people, generally, sometimes. Uh, here comes the EV utility outside. Uh, smoke towards the front of the train, a second smoke as well. Molotov on behind the bomb train itself, and Athena is about to get some action. They're gonna be coming through, spamming into the smoke. No one's checking Ivy. She's fortunate no one is pushing down, but a bomb planted and all five players from Able Esports surviving. Sapphire just barely is gonna make this a tough retake. They do have a smoke and a kit for the bomb. It's still a bit up in the air, but a nice shot from Athena has suddenly propelled Silhouette into a four on three, and they've got Sapphire isolated at the back of E-Box. They're quick to capitalize. Smiley could stop the defuse, and she's spamming knife out, but sadly, just a second too late, she's going to get shut down. So Silhouette, they find the pistol round. They manage to make that retake happen, and uh, it was it was very, very well played to like capitalize at just the right moment on all the right fights. You know, they find every little one-on-one -on -one that they can. They pincer onto Sapphire Ebox. Once they dealt with her, they turn their attention to Pop Dog, and they just kind of nullify all these angles one by one as a group. So that pistol round gets locked in. Able calling an attack pause just out of the gate. Uh, they want to try and really spice things up with this force bite in the second round. Man, it's, it's also... I. I feel bad a little bit. That was a cool, cool attempt by Smiley to wrap all the way around from T mid towards towards Ivy. The fact that she didn't get there in time, if she or if her teammates could have just held on for a few more seconds before that defuse began, before they started falling, that would have been absolutely excellent. Either way, um, Silhouette's going to start us out one to nothing. And we have a force buy. AK-47s on Bouchard and Kimmy. Scout on Exile. Full weaponry for the CT side, quite obviously. Plenty of Molotovs, four of them to be exact, to drop in these choke points early on. And there's the first. Going to prevent Bouchard from coming out. I don't even know if she wanted to regardless. But at least going to slow things down. I don't think Medici saw that player jump over, but she certainly got the tag. Oh, but a well-placed shot from Kimmy. And that there is the advantage picked up, given over. And this is where things can get a little bit tricky, right? Like you're, you're gonna start to lean with your players more in towards one of these sites. And right now it's gonna be A, that's where that first kill came in at. But this is all gearing up towards a B play from Abel. And you can see like in, in kind of furthering this gamble even more with the smokes going down and Ivy, it's pulled Luna away from B. Right now this B site is, is empty. There's not even anyone here to offer up any resistance. Luna finally rotates back in. And so she will be present as this site take looks to come through. This Molotov that she still held on to could make quite the difference, just in terms of doing a bit of damage, slowing down this play into the site. And it has, like, divided this site take in two. Suddenly, Smiley is throwing out all on her lonesome to try and go aggressive. But they've dealt with this well, you know? No, no one's fallen in amongst all this chaos. And in fact, Smiley's actually there to pick up a kill and extend this advantage even further. They do deal with her, but at what cost? As now they find themselves in the two on four retake at the B bomb site. Yeah, and they're they're gonna really go for it. They're gonna really try and make this work. There's the first kill for Athena. Still three players to find. One more kill for Exile with the scout. Athena's got the AK, but not for long. She's dropped. Good round from Exile. Two kills from up top. Good round for Kimmy as well. Two frags for her. And Able Esports respond immediately after losing the pistol.
Man, I don't know. When it when it gets down to that five on four after this pick from Kimmy, with the way that they actually rotated Lunar Cats went all the way outside, I kind of wanted to see them just like gamble at the outer bomb site and just save entirely. And then you have, you know, two M4s and two SMGs to fight with in the next round, and you can try it all over. Um, but they were they were very clearly out of position. Um, tough call to make though. So one to one, we're all tied up. Ooh. That's a smoke going into main. I thought it was going to be a flashbang. I'm not going to lie, but Natty still wins the fight anyway. And that's forced the uh, the scout out of position as well. And now for Abel, they lean back over towards B. Bouchard gets out upper, but doesn't check close at spools. So she goes down. This is an interesting push up the pop dog. And they're going to find Exile. Smiley falls shortly there and after. And it's all on to Sapphire, of course. We wanted a close game. Well, this is it. Back and forth out of the gate. Sapphire, well, she is going to get one now. Now that element of surprise is gone. And they know where she is. Armed with only the Deagle, this definitely isn't ideal. And it, it's a very, very horrible round to approach. I, I just think, like, dropping the bomb, whether it's in Pop Dog, whether it's above Pop Dog, it's such a horrible, like, death sentence of a bomb drop, especially in a 1v3. They can hide in these halls, they can play the close angles, they can play off of one another. No one needs to give a fight over right now. And that's what Sapphire is, like, hinging this entire clutch on is someone getting overzealous. And no one's going to. She does find Medici. There's that one kill. That was the only player who was, like, a little bit separated from the rest of the pack but not able to follow up onto Luna and at this point you're playing for kills right you're not even trying to uh, oh. to get this bomb down she makes the jump and Deeg's down Natty so now just Luna left to oh. oh Sapphire's done it all three four in the round and somehow I, I completely wrote that off but she navigates it like a beast a second on the board for Abel and I'm kind of speechless at the end of that one. Oh my god the jump up with in in the flames right at the edge of the molotov what a play that's so gross i mean this is yeah this one right here and it makes a footstep and even just destroys natty what a clutch And the tack pause as well. Just let them relish it, man. Just let them sit there and deal with the hand that was just dealt to them. That that should have never slipped by. Sapphire has just done the impossible to keep Abel in a very, very good spot. You might even be like tempted to to consider a force again, like knowing that you kind of got the money in a bit of a rough spot. But CT side, it, it's never it's it's never gonna happen. They decide against that. They they invest a bit on the players that can afford it, but it's mostly USPs here. And, and so yeah, this this should be the three one lead for Abel. Something would have to go very very wrong for that not to happen. Oh my, I, that's I can't believe that just occurred. That's absolutely wild. Sapphire. Man, after that kind of a clutch, you have to imagine you're going to have a really good game. You've got to be feeling supremely confident at this point. Six and one, the scoreline for Sapphire out of a, after a pair of kills to start this round. Man, that round for Silhouette is just like, I think everyone played it way too scared and logical. No one actually wanted to take that fight. And it was just, if you would all peek and just fight at the same time, there's no way she can win it. And, it, and she got a bunch of 1v1s. Still, I mean, incredible and impressive shots. There's another kill coming down the ramp for Sapphire. Add a fourth on top. And don't hunt down the ace. You might as well just do it. Smiley's doing everything in her power to not give it over. <laughs> she hears the footsteps. Oh, no, she's giving the information over to Sapphire. I think they're saying, Sapphire, go for it. Go on. Yeah, let that let her out. What? A, what oh, no. no. Oh, such a shame. Close. Listen, if, uh, and four kills in the round. You know, that's another confidence boosting one for Sapphire. It's worrying when someone gets off to such an explosive start like that because you start to wonder, like, what else are they capable of in this series if that's how the first few rounds have gone? Well, listen, I'm just saying if you're a real teammate, you're jumping out of that choke point with knife in hand and really baiting for that ace. She doesn't have she, have, she doesn't have some real ones next to her, Harry, is what I'm saying. Exile with the AWP, peering down the lane. Oh, that flashbang hurts, though. I think she was actually primed to get that first kill. It looks like Medici peeked exactly where she was watching if it weren't for that pesky flashbang. A lot of attention from Abel down here towards Ivy. 
and still leaving Bouchard over towards B. So this like this leaves their options open in this round based on the kind of contact that they get, the information that presents itself. They can still wrap into B through CT or they can commit to A thanks to Sapphire still floating around main. So, you know, you really do just kind of have like the, the whole world open to you at this point based on what you see. Uh, from the silhouette side they throw in this utility and look at what this has done to the hold from silhouette right that they're forced back into ct they're holding for a wrap that's, that's never gonna arrive and so they get into this a site they find all the kills and there's just not enough players here to actually offer up the resistance you were hoping for from the silhouette side the bomb goes down exile finds herself another and so for medici and luna I, I hope this is the save because i feel like silhouette they, they love going for these retakes in like 2v4s and this is, this is risky. They're going to creep forward. They're going to see what they can get away with. And Luna, I, I thought she would have seen the player on Brown. It's a nice flick back to find it, but not the follow-up. And so now for Medici, 1v3, bomb planted for so many different positions. She's got so much to bear in mind. She's got to back away and save. She will at least get out of it with the AWP, but it's a fourth round for Abel. Yeah, they're starting to really look good. And now, I mean, especially on the T-side, getting starting in this way, having advantage of the economy. If Smiley can find this off, that would be everything. And Medici, just beneath her, if she clears straight down, not gonna happen. So, the AWP is saved in a timeout, a tactical timeout called for Silhouette. Four to one. And, uh, I mean, this is kind of playing out a little bit as uh, of what we thought. Able Esports looking, looking good, as long as the map is not Inferno. Yeah, I mean, you know, they come into it already like riding a high on the back of a very, very dominant Vertigo victory. And I feel like the, the the way that this had to start for Silhouette to like get out of that funk and build up some momentum again would be with like a strong beginning. And that just hasn't been the case, you know? So now like you're already getting those Vertigo vibes back again. You're already getting a little bit pressured to feel like you have to make these plays happen. Like you have to be the one to, to force the hand almost. And I think that's where Silhouette like look they're most uncomfortable in a sense, you know? Like, I think it's when 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 they're feeling comfortable, they're back in like their game plan and you're making the opponents react to you. That's when they're feeling their strongest. But I don't know if that's the mindset they're gonna be in right now. Oh, Bouchard flashed. They might have seen each other, but she's got the first kill, obviously. An AK-47, a massive advantage. Another pop flash through. Natty can't make it. She's tagged mid jump and she was blind herself. So Bouchard has gotten positioning outside on top of the train. But Medici saw that as well. Still, everyone falling for the defense, and Bouchard is going to grab that last frag. Five to one, and Bouchard gets a quad kill in the round. Uh, Able Esports obviously still with a good lead. It is just so scary as well because like you know when the t side kind of gets off to this this start things can very quickly spiral and like swell out of control um you know because you have the cts in such a vulnerable spot in terms of their money where they're constantly like buying and then losing and then having to take an eco uh, and if you can keep that up like you can just you can just run away with a half so silhouette it's important that they don't just win a round but they've got to win it cleanly as well Okay, well. Smiley taking a bit of damage. This is uh, at least a good start for Silhouette. And a five on four. And it's slowed a lot of things down. It gives them plenty of breathing room. They're going to be hurting for utility a little bit. Two smokes and four flashbangs for the rest of the round for Silhouette. So the timing of these two smokes is everything. And neither of those smokes are towards the inner bomb site. Might be the tough part fourth player rotating outside just now. That's Athena coming into connector. And as long as Kimmy just peeks into this, and Medici's, that's an easy angle. That's an easy shot to hit. And there it is. Even the jiggle peak not going to bait anything out. The rest of Able Esports walking towards the inner bomb site, but they've got such a long way to go because Sapphire's so far back with the bomb. They almost need to start this hit right now. Yeah, and they're still just keeping it on pause. They're still just keeping it on the back burner until Sapphire arrives. Now they try and go in, but you've got to get past Luna. And Athena here on the inner site, and they're not giving any ground over. Sapphire, 1v5 required. She's blown our minds once before, but this is asking a little too much of her with the wrap coming in through Pop Dog. Silhouette, they will get that second round on the board, and we said it needed to be clean. Well, it is. They keep four players alive, so... 
a must-win round, and uh, they, they kind of meet all the conditions required if they want to recover this CT side nice and early on before this game starts to feel like it's too far gone. This is one issue I've seen amongst these two teams, obviously, today, but, I mean, it's, it's kind of spread throughout some of the other women's teams we've seen as well. I mean, towards the end there, in that three-on whatever, that three-man hit down the lower ramp, there were three Molotovs and a bunch of flashbangs that could have been used but just weren't. Good trading down the ladder to give a man advantage over to Able Esports. And, and that's, I mean, just to go back to that point, there's just like, there's flashbangs you can use to at least give yourself an advantage, to at least give yourself a half second to get into that fight properly. Molotovs behind trains to force players out into the open. And just seeing none of it used to actually attack into the bomb site, that's maybe a kill that could have been provided that can do economic damage. That maybe gets you into the bomb site in with a clean plant and an ability to actually defend against it. So, um, just a bit unfortunate. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them later on. At the moment, still a three-round lead when they're up five to two. Yeah, and here comes the BX to cute. There's no doubt about it for Luna. She's called for the rotation, but she swings and gets blinded there by Smiley. That's an easy kill for Exile. This two on four, I would love to see just a, kind of a, a decisive, uh, well, actually, now maybe not. Now maybe not, but each is nailed <laughs> one, so. That, okay, another kill given over, and never mind, I'm gonna bide my time because Medici here delivering with the AWP wasn't Too quite able to capitalize onto Exile, but they get no, the information. No. Oh, they have two Molotovs for the bomb and the smoke was used at upper ramp. Go on, Harry, keep it going. Yeah, that's a little bit heartbreaking, and these Molotovs might not even be needed because Exile's just nailing shots anyway, and there's Sapphire to end it. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a shame. I didn't even pick up on that smoke usage, Jason. That's why it's good that you're here. But uh, yeah, that's going into upper, never ideal. Like it could have made all the difference just to hold on to that because the, the play was looking like it was just a delay with the Molotovs. And had it come down to that, that would have been heartbreaking to see that be the reason that that round slips away from you. Yeah, I, I think that might have been the only chance of actually winning that was just a smoke on the bomb and, and stick the defuse. That doesn't even get to that point, though, unfortunately. And, I mean, again, much as you said, I'm, I'm the same way. I would have liked to have seen a save, but once you're gifted those kind of first two kills in a two-on-four, you might as well go for it. Unfortunately, it just lures them into the trap of losing everything. No longer having an AWP on the CT side, which has provided them some opening kills. Um, now they don't have that resource. So backs against the wall for Silhouette, and if they lose this one, they're decimated. Zero dollars on four of their players. That's a pretty harsh reset, even with a losing bonus built up. Oh, Sapphire hears all of this as well. She knows they've gone aggressive into main. Ah, she looks away and gives up this control, but it's because the deep smokes come on in. I was a little bit paranoid there because if they had kept going, they could have caught players lining up utility. Now Sapphire is on the angle. And not just Sapphire, there are a lot of players here just staring down Maiden, like this stalemate almost. Waiting, hoping that this peak comes in. Because like at this point in time, right, with 40 seconds left, if you get a main peak, if you find that opener here, that would make all the difference. Instead, they just up and leave. They sneak away. It's, it's yeah. a shame because all it takes is like one of these players to go aggressive and spot while there's no one here. They throw this utility and it's a fake and you have like this information early anyway. So it's afforded Athena the rotation around into this B site, but she does get smoked off. That's going to force the reposition over here. Now trying to kind of work in tandem with Luna. The rotation's coming through from the rest of the gang, but Luna's still going unchecked. Gets away with a lot of damage from inside the site. And now it's all left on Exile. Seven seconds, there's no time. It's the third round for Silhouette. And once again, four players stay alive. Well, once again, Able Esports make that attack happen. All five players alive. They had five Molotovs. I believe they had something like two to three flashbangs. They had at least one smoke. None of that actually used to help them get into the bomb site. Part of that is obviously due to the, the round timer getting a little bit low, which is the pressure applied by a really late take control of, of T mid. But still, that's a lot of utility to not be put into play when you're getting slaughtered and attacking that bomb site. So that's twice now towards that inner site. And I think the real the thing that's got me really confused about it is just in the last round that we saw, not not this one where they got destroyed, but previously when they hit that inner bomb site, they used utility. So we've seen them actually use utility to take the bomb site efficiently, and we've seen them twice now not use nades and get destroyed when they try and take that bomb site. Um, which, you know, to me, shows a bit of uh, correlation and causation. Yeah, and I always felt like as well, like if you've lost main like that, 
even still like committing and following through with that uh with that b play i'm not the biggest fan of but i'm gonna hold this thought because we have this early fight going down in ivy and so now with an advantage they look like they wanted to pick up the pace and that smoke from natty has at least slowed this down and trade these guns back over they try and do it safely, but Kimmy's just like, nah, I'll, I'll just walk, I'll just run the gauntlet right through the smoke, drops it over, it's all fine. She's got the AWP in hand, and that's a threatening thing to run into. So now some Ivy control for Abel, still with Bouchard over here towards B, so you've got that option to fall back into a B play later in the round. She drops the utility pretty early on, considering this still could fall into this B hit. But it hasn't forced a rotation yet. And Kimmy's here to try and sell this A play. She would have loved the kill. Oh, no, she's playing the trigger discipline. But there's a player right behind her. And Athena going to shut her down. That's such a shame. Like, oh, just realizing a second too late, the player just skirts back out of view. She doesn't get any usage out of that position. One kill there could have made all the difference of just keeping those players at the A site. And now this freedom of movement is given over to Silhouette. They realize it's the B play. Luna, she's been good at holding this down, but this time she gets annihilated out of the gate. I think it's a drive-by from Sapphire, who might still need to do a little bit more work. She's close up to the smoke. Good double from Naomi. And now Sapphire can choose how she wants to play this. She can wrap all the way around. She can stay here and just watch Exiles got that covered. And Athena falls to the ground off in hand, one versus two at completely different angles. And Sapphire again, coming alive on train and delivering. She's at the 13 kills, four deaths. Exiles up there with her as well. 10 kills, three deaths for her. And Able Esports have a four round lead. Ooh, and you can just see, like, you know, as a result of these rounds, it never being allowed to chain anything together for Silhouette just always leaves them on, like, the precipice of running out of money. And so this is, like, this, this is what we were worried about, this T-side just kind of being allowed to spiral out of control on the back of it. If they're able to keep this round clean, then they get themselves that buffer, they're looking good, right? They go 8-3 up, and, and they're feeling very, very content with it, the way that this game has gone so far. They catch Luna going aggressive at B as well. They start this round off in a five on four with a lot of damage already done onto the one rifle player in this round. Kimmy into the B site. She's selling this fake. She's can completely split this defense apart. And actually they decide, you know what? It's not a fake anymore. We'll rotate this bomb round. We'll try and get in. They do actually lose her in the process. And so they continue to barrel on through. Thankfully, no one's deep within the site. And so this should still allow for the bomb plant to come in. Ooh, okay. There's the op kill from Exile. Medici on the middle of the bomb train. Gonna wrap around. She's dropped as well. Man, Exile's op has, uh, has really come alive. Between her and Sapphire, there's some very strong performances that Silhouette just doesn't seem to have the, the ability to overcome. Uh, this is this is quite nice so far, so far heading into round number 12. Eight to three. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, you know, like, uh, we, we saw, like, an attempt at the uh, the B upper aggression just then. I would love to see one of the orbs with Silhouette maybe, like, go go for the peak out of spawn if they have a good setup for it. Like, if you are in that position where that's something that's available to you. Because so often, Abel have just been putting one player over towards this side of the map to hold on to it. And that could be something you look to exploit. Attack pause cooled on in. And so now we get to see the fruits of that. We've got a double orb set up here for the CT side. Athena and Medici are going to be donning them. And we do sometimes see Athena leaning over towards this B site early on. So maybe we have a chance for that orb peak out of, out of the, uh, the spawn. Let's see. Smiley. She's crossed the op angle. Holding for someone to run along the wall towards ladder room. And now she's going to take a tight turn around that corner, and they still don't realize Athena is here. The question is, when does she sell herself? She's smoked off. Now it gets weird because she's got to get aggressive. Natty has one fall right in front of her. That's an easy one. Now comes the difficult task, and she can't stand up to it. Exile again delivering. And now she has to go back and deliver the bomb because that's been dropped and left in spawn. And Athena's been here since the beginning, but hasn't been able to get involved in the action. She goes down next, 9-3.
can feel horrible as well because like you know you've been waiting for these last few rounds to bring this full buy into the question you know where you have the double orbs you have the utility and you just get steamrolled right like out of the gate that there's no like build up there's no mid round it is just a cool from spawn fast day play everybody falls and boom you're right back down to pistols like that familiar like heartbreaking feeling where you know that you don't have much stake in this round and so they're going to group up over on A, maybe try some of this main aggression. That's a nice shot from Athena to open this up. And she's going to hear these footsteps migrating over towards B. So these rotations are going to come in very, very quickly. They need to check the spools for Luna because she's gotten away with damage here before. And so they're wise to it. They deal with her. Exile, you keep mentioning how her AWP has been instrumental. And, and I really think we can't drive that home enough. It's another big kill from her to keep this in the advantage of Abel. Medici, while she gets one, Smiley just being the, uh, the trades that are needed. She finds them both. Exile with a double. 10 on the board for Abel. And this one-sided game continues. Yeah, I like that call as well. Hitting that uh, that inner bomb site real quick. That was uh, that was important considering you lost your presence towards T mid. So nice job from Abel Esports to recognize that and just hit the bomb site. And then pretty easy take, all things considered. 15 kills for Exile with her AWP. 14 kills for Sapphire. And she's going to lead the way out mid this time, and she feels safe transitioning into the Olaf position. And, ooh, can't find that first frag. Good win for Athena. Dropping a Molotov and backing away. Five on four advantage for Silhouette, who, I mean, let's be honest, desperately need these last two rounds. Are we going to have another 11-4 half? That's the question, right? Or is it going to be even more one-sided than that? Because we've been cursed with them today. Flash over in towards main, and that gives Natty this forward positioning. She's going to here rotates as well over here towards the B bomb site. And already, you know, being in this five on four, you're already afforded an extra player over towards B. And now with this like main aggression and Athena just spotting Ivy in that moment, it's caused a third player to rotate into this B site. The Molotov of Luna is very well timed. It has split this push in two. And even though Kimmy gets into the site, she is alone. And with her death, the bomb is dropped. So a three on two, Exile delivering one. Thankfully, Naomi getting spammed. The flash is good from Luna. It wasn't a flash rather, she just did the damage. It looked like there was a flashback there, but maybe there was one. Style on the AWP and a second kill, pivoting around. And a little chance here at delivering something great. Naomi still down at spools, but Exile's very, very quick. And only Athena left, but she catches her dropping from heaven. Silhouette, a fourth round at the very, very least. And now we toe the line between repeating this 11 for half, or maybe Silhouette can scrape a fifth one by. There was a flashbang here. You're not going crazy. Well, you oh, might be. Just not, not, that's not the reason why, or that's not the indication. Um, it was from, I think, I'm assuming it's from Athena way, way far back. So nicely done from her because they needed it. I cannot believe Exile. They were shattered earlier by an incredible clutch from Sapphire. If Exile had won that one, it just would have been game over. As it stands, one more chance to build a bit of breathing room for the second half. Not much, but it's something. If they can get to five, And look at this, they've just up and left the B bomb site. They, they, they are very much leaning into A, and that is the right call to make right now. Sapphire is going to win that fight. Turns his back in the advantage of Abel, but there's the response from Naomi. She's doing what she can, and what she can is actually quite a lot over here from Heaven. Luna's moved into position to Ivy as well, and with Exile so low, you want to try and get like some usage out of her on this AWP. Smiley winning a must-win fight. Exile falls and it's down to the 1v1 and she will answer the call. It's four from Naomi. Five at the end of the first half for Silhouette. Ten for Abel. And a one-sided first half of play with Abel now moving into the CT side. Can Silhouette bounce back or is this Abel taking the 2-1 victory? You're going to have to join us in just a moment to find out. Now 
I'm surrounded. Nice cars at the mansion right next to the fountain. Woo. CEOs in business suits and private accountants. Yeah. Summertime parties by the pool, we lounging. Lounge. Then by night, we out stunting on the main strip. Skirt. Out of state trips, cars with the paint drip. Yeah. How could you hate this? Jewelry in my chain, sick. sick. That's the life I want to live. Show me the money. Uh. Show me the money. Abel are leading in a very big way right now. 10-5 up. And as has often been the case across all three maps in this series, this pistol round can make a hell of a lot of difference for both of these teams. It's going to be Silhouette who are really relying on this to get back into the swing of things. They've gone for utility out of the gate. They've got a lot of, uh, I'd say like a lot of smokes, right, to go for this A play. They throw these in and they're going to try and make some progress in. Now that con smoke looks like it's gone a little too deep there. That's going to allow for rotation still out through the connector. Sapphire holding close, and there's a bit of a pile up. She's only good for one, but Exile taps down another, and these pistols go back and forth. Kimmy needs to land this shot, and she can't quite find it, but it might not matter. Naomi dancing around, still alive, but she will get cut down. It's 11 to 5. Abel get the pistol locked in. It's fast. It's quick. And now they sit in a very good spot moving into this second half of play. Yeah, I'm still what's fortunate that Sapphire didn't just shut that round down right at the start. She had three players lined up coming through that smoke. Hard to steer as they come out the other side. Able to get one, nothing more. But uh, I mean, Able Esports just, you know, they, they pounce on that bomb site immediately afterwards. So well done from them, 11 to 5. Classic inner bomb site rush. Flashbang is going to slow it down, but not forever. Ooh, and I like this gun. This is an uh, oldie but a goodie. Old but gold. And Bouchard gonna transition over as well and it doesn't even really matter these T's are just dying so quick yeah they get melted but still rifles looming for silhouette it's one of these horrible spots though where like you know you, you really are like counting on one hand how many chances you have right now if you're silhouette they, they really kind of are hinging on a victory here or maybe not at all they're gonna have one more rifle round if this one doesn't go their way but they want to make an impression right out of the gate, especially with this bonus round being ran by Abel. You know, you hope that they can get past this because this is not the biggest challenge they are going to face so far. All right, around the smoke. Naomi wants to go through it. Flashbangs are out. Here she comes. Bouchard on top of the bomb train in the middle. Going to peer over some smoke of her own. They're already wrapping onto the bomb train. And that's not enough defense to stop them from taking out Bouchard. A nice double kill from Smiley. And she stays in the fight. She goes back for more, even after running out of ammunition. And there's the wraparound from Sapphire. And Athena gets nothing done in a one versus two. It's 13 to five. It's an eight round lead and Able Esports looking to close this out in three. Man, it's kind of rough. Like it feels like whenever Silhouette are in these situations where their backs are against the wall, uh, the wall and all these rounds just become so important that they kind of like fall into these very, very fast plays just right out of spawn. And you know, that was the case back on Vertigo and it felt like it was the undoing for what was like the, 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 the remnants of a comeback early on, right, where they streak together a few rounds and then those fast plays do just betray them. Well, here, it's like more of the same, you know? It's like the moment these smokes come in, you're not really like leaving anything to the imagination. They commit to the play. There's loads of bodies inside of the site for Abel. 
and they're able to just break it apart. So now they're only onto these pistols. They slow it down a bit in this round. They have been able to sneak Athena down through Olaf, and no one from Abel knows that she's here. So we're looking at Athena to try and make a real difference in this round. Her deagle gets some chip damage, but not quite the kill. It will the second time around. And suddenly we're into this three on two. Yeah, but I mean, look back to the first half. The op from Exile was on point. This should be a piece of cake for her. Missed opportunity, but that's the bomb. And if that bomb drops down ladder, Bouchard would be ready and waiting. What a weird situation to be in, though. Two players already taking the bomb site outside. Bomb is going to wrap around all the way to Ivy. This is a long time for Lunar Cats to hold on to position, but this is a pretty stellar spot. I don't think Exile clears this. I don't think anyone clears this. I like the decision from Bouchard right now. Instead of just committing through pop, she went on a rotation, and this is going to be helped out massively by uh, by Medici taking that that very long rotate in through Ivy. Because suddenly now Bouchard is in, in a very different spot. She's gotten here pretty quickly relative to that bomb going down, and she's already clearing out a lot of these angles. Now Luna holding on. Exile, she is going to check it, and she does get rid of her. Medici now left in the clutch in a 1v2. She spotted Bouchard, but it goes both ways. They know that she's here. They time this peak well, but each key, they're closing the distance, and Bouchard is going to get the kill. The defuse comes in. It's 14 for Abel. Ooh, it's 14 for Abel. <laughs> as <laughs> they try and like uh, give the MVP over. It oh, wasn't, no, wait, there was no kit on Exile, rather. That's yeah, it, it oh. wasn't. It wasn't the cleanest swap of the defuse, um, but but no weird moments happening whatsoever. 14 to five. Good recovery, and Silhouette still just stuck there. No rounds yet in the second half. Able Esports, two rounds away uh, from winning and eliminating Silhouette from uh, from the DreamHack Showdown. Yeah, and this isn't how you want to go out either, right? Like Silhouette, after how good they looked on Inferno, it leaves us uh, wanting a lot more from them here on Train. Luna going to be holding above Pop. She's got players aggressing. No, is she going to be ready for it? She's not. Bouchard gets that kill. And now, like, this is a problem because you've spotted players going aggressive. They try and challenge for it, and that doesn't work. So now you're just, now, now your hands are tied. Like, you've got to commit to the A play. And the problem is, is there's just, there's no doubt in Abel's mind that that's the decision that's going to be made here, especially with Bouchard keeping up on this aggression. She just holds this. She basically allows yeah. for a stack in the A site, and this should be the round one. Well, she's essentially reduced the map for Silhouette to just two choke points, Ivy and, and Team Mid. There's nowhere else they can attack at the moment. That makes it so much easier for the defense. A nice pick might alleviate that. I don't know why Smiley's turning around. Have some faith in your teammates. That's a, that's a weird decision. That's opened this round back up. All of a sudden, Kimmy is at E-Box, kind of in no man's land, not with a whole lot of support. Thankfully, she basically clotheslines Naomi. Another one comes out. That's the off on Medici. It doesn't land. Natty in a one versus two to keep Silhouette alive. Moving over to the bomb slide, moving over to E-Box as well. No one spotted the cross just yet, but they're in position to pounce. And actually, she's going to bypass the A bomb slide altogether. This is actually a really cool move. This opens up everything for her to get this bomb planted and plenty of time to get in a good position for the after plant. Yeah, th this decision could be the one that shapes this round up to be a silhouette round. Natty has given herself every opportunity in the world here. She, as you say, she's got time to make her mind up. She gets this bomb planted for Royal Side. She's going to play back in CT. And this is brilliant. You know, now she's got the option to, to kind of isolate these two engagements and treat them as two separate 1v1s. Out through Connector, it's Sapphire. She doesn't go up and over. She creeps on in. They work out where this bomb is. And in doing so, in clearing all these positions that they have, they kind of nullify the positions that Natty can be in. They know where she is. They're on the bomb. And she doesn't get that kill. Sapphire finds it. And it's 15 now on the board for Abel. They pull off the 2v1. It was uh, it was worrisome there for a moment because, you know, you said, you said about Smiley, have some faith in your teammates. Well, similar thing happens to Kimmy, who who pivots to check Pop Dog in the 3v1, even with uh, the, the the flank being held by Bouchard. So there were a yeah. few weird moments, but thankfully, you know, like just through the individuals and through kind of like all getting back on the same page when it mattered most in that 2v1, they are able to emerge victorious. 
Yeah, and, and that, I mean, I said have faith in your teammates. It could very well just be a lack of communication of what's being covered as well. So it might not have been her fault, you know, at all. But regardless, they still get the round win. So they can figure that kind of stuff out later. That's easy to figure out when you, uh, you're coming out of a nice victory on a map. Kimmy's going to play right behind this smoke, and he's going to have a lot of attention. Exiles here with the AWP as well. Could be a fast flank with ladder room control. That Molotov, oh, that's going to be painful to run through. But they swing. She's got one. A lot of damage dealt to Athena. Exile still waiting. Free beat as Natty gives up half her body with that kind of a peek. And there's that flank from Smiley coming in hot, coming in very fast. Naomi waiting at the top of the ramp. Smiley can't win the battle, but Exile again with the AWP. Finishes off Lunar Cats, and she's going to progress even forward. And now she hears the footsteps. Good grab from Athena. One versus two. Molotov is out, but it's not enough to take the bomb timer all the way down. And she's going to hold for a peek. Coming up the ladder is one, and that is... Okay, well, could have been an epic moment, but Bouchard shuts it down, and Able Esports take the map. They take the series 16-5 to on train. Yeah, incredibly dominant from Able. You know, and everyone was feeling confident. That final peak from Bouchard, I think, just highlights it so well. Like, who goes about playing that 2v1 like that? I love that from Bouchard. And in a way, like, you know, just shoots up the ladder, finds the frags, and locks in the victory for Able. And that puts an end to Silhouette's run here. Able, though, they excite me. You know, like, coming into this, I'd seen them play the other day, and, and you know, they, 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 they look good but they didn't look that good. The fact that they dismantle Silhouette and it doesn't even really look like they kind of break a sweat outside of Inferno is a very good start. Yeah. Well, that was that was a bit of a letdown for me. It was like that Silhouette on Inferno versus Silhouette on every other map. I was like, please just bring it back to that Silhouette that we had on the opening map. That could have been a very cool series, obviously not to be. Um, so regardless, uh, that's that's it. That's the series. Able Esports takes it. Congratulations to them. Silhouette, unfortunately eliminated. We're going to head to a break, but when we come back, we've got the marquee women's Counter-Strike matchup in North America. It's Dignitas, it's CLG Red. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the DreamHack Showdown Summer 2020 and Able Esports White clearly won in not just the series, but clearly the map pool game as well as Silhouette after an impressive performance on Inferno, just couldn't repeat it on the other two maps. I mean, Vilas, are you, are you slightly disappointed with the fact that despite going to three maps, it wasn't really that close? 
Yeah, I, I just I wish it was indeed a little bit closer. We I'm, I'm glad we finally did get to see three maps. I mean, that's I think the first time today uh, we've seen so like many rundowns. So I'm at least glad that happened. Um, but a little bit more of a fight would have been nice. Yeah, and Vilka, do you think if Silhouette had a bit more time together and more time to work on that map pool, say bringing some of that fire we saw on Inferno Tower maps, they could actually be more of a threat, say, at next showdown. Yeah, definitely. I really enjoyed look uh, watching their Inferno. They were really good. They established banana control. They were showing a good of, you know, teamwork, strats, everything. But on Vertigo, we could see they didn't practice it. They never tried to take out of control. They were always failing their nades. Well, at least they tried to play it together, as we see. Well, let's talk about Exile because I felt like Exile was kind of getting warmed up yesterday. There didn't seem to be that confidence there. There are a few near misses and today she was on a completely different level. I was so impressed with the way she stepped up. Do you think, Vilas, that she was the ultimate win condition for her team? Oh, I mean, definitely on train. She was on the double digits before the rounds hit double digits. Um, she was really popping off. She's very versatile. She's not just sticking to one angle the whole time. She sometimes pushes. She does like unex uh, un unpredictable things with the AWP. So I really, I really loved seeing that come to life. We've seen some, some misses earlier on, maybe even on Inferno sometimes that I like, I kind of need to hold my heart in order to, like, hopefully it will be okay. And thank God on train, she delivered. Now I'm going to pause, I was about to say, because I knew that we were going to get a phone call. It's Kimmy on the line. Hey, hey, Hello, Kimmy. Kim. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing good. How about you guys? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I was going to ask this to Vilga, but I'm going to ask you instead. I noticed sure. yesterday, just to, you kept abusing the B site. Today, you kept abusing the A site on Vertigo. Why is it that you tend to find a bomb site you like and stick to it? Um, on Vertigo, especially, uh, you know, we've, been, we've watched like pro games and all they do is go A. <laughs> it's rarely that they go B. I mean, the fight is mostly A. If they don't go B, it's it, it's honestly like um, if they if they don't rush B, they don't go B. They're gonna be going A. I mean, that's that's how we took it. So yeah, and then yeah. Yeah, I really liked your Vertigo. It was it was very structured. You played the default and always tried to finish an A with the strats. It was really good. Congrats with winning. Thank My you. question is, how are you getting into your next game? Did you anti strat or anything? Um, for the next our next game? Yeah. You said sorry. Um, I think at this point, like it's so late in the game because we've never seen them play together. I don't think there's any use to anti stratting. Um, I think all of their habits we would like we would see in the match itself. So I think, like I said yesterday, it's the same thing. You know, just staying proactive in our next game and our future games onwards. Um, just staying proactive and and willing to take risk and calculate risk and things like that. Um, I think we'll be okay. And we just have to trust our strats, trust our teammates, and then we got it. Fair. So what exactly happened on that first map? Because I, I know you guys are able to pull off Inferno, um, but it just kind of like it felt like it was slipping away at some point. But you guys did recover eventually on the second map. So I was just wondering, like, how did that go down, like, communication wise? Uh, to me personally, my spirits got a little crushed playing B uh, on CT side uh, just because, you know, these, the girls that we were playing with, they have insane aim. These girls are insane. Like Myrna, uh, sorry, Texna and Naomi, they have insane aim, headshots all the way. And then I think their um, flash flash peaks are really on point. Um, we tried to counter it a little bit with, you know, waiting for their flash and then us reflash, that kind of thing, but it wasn't working. And then I feel like, as for myself, I just couldn't find an opportunity, you know, to get set up or to set someone up. Um, I, didn't, I feel like we didn't have enough room for that. Um, but it was it was a rough map. Why you guys never took banana control? Um, because I think it was a little bit hard. Uh, they would re molly car, and we would like we would often plan on peeking after the first molly on the CT side. Yeah. But they would re molly it, and by the time they re molly it, a flash is in your face. I'm white, Smiley's white, and then <laughs> Julie's like, um, what do I do? Do I flash? You know that kind of thing. So it was like, um, 
it was a little bit hard. I think we got a little bit, uh, we weren't being as proactive. We weren't really paying attention to the little details that they would do, like the flashes when they flash and things like that. We noticed it eventually, but I think um, among all things, like we weren't hitting our shots too. Yeah, but you want this best of three, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That is Luckily. true, as Vilga says, a win is a win. Congratulations, Kimmy, to you and the Thank team. Thank you very much. And we'll see you playing very shortly against That's What yes. She Said. So, yeah, go and have a well-earned break. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. There we go. I, I love uh, I love the, the directness, Vilga. Oh, why didn't you take banana control? Uh, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I love that too. Inferno. If you have a chance to take banana control, you take this chance. Okay, so who has got the best banana control out of all the teams we've seen so far in this tournament? Dignitas. Okay, and why is that? Is it because they literally push two players up banana and just smoke and deny that vision? Or is there another reason? No, because the way they play, they play for information, you know? Like, they don't throw their nades away straight away. They first jump for the information. Then if they don't see anyone, they would just nade deep ramp and they would always, like, give some damage. Well, maybe we'll see that Banana Masterclass later because that oh, is our is next there. series. There we go. Right. Well, we need to make Vilga happy. So we're, we're praying for Inferno here. But before then, Vilas, you are going to be taking us to Inferno and highlighting a, a default silhouette. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to highlight one round here of uh, silhouette indeed. You know, the thing is, in this round, round number eight, um, Abel were losing very often at this point in the game. So what they do, they're using two CT players to kind of try and pull something off there, what was kind of going wrong earlier on. Um, and the thing is, Silhouette is just spreading out at this point. They they do try to counter that aggression by throwing a Pop Flash and Athena eventually is getting those kills. And then she is re-smoking there on CT. And as soon as Bouchard is hearing all of that action flashes and Molotov's heading her way, it forces Exile to rotate over towards that B bomb side. But little do they know that Silhouette is using that opportunity to kind of, you know, clear out mid, look around the corner, and as soon as Naomi falls on that B bomb side, they make a move and they hit straight on A. Now, the thing is, um, their after plant position was not as great, and kind of that sloppiness um, kind of translated later on in the game. And if we look at the point of view of Exile here, um, you can see that uh, as soon as she kind of tried to retake, she was met by a smoke. But that smoke had a massive gap in it. She could easily um, like look past through it and together with Bruchard, she could then easily retake. You know, um, Natty still had two flashbangs, wasn't used. And I think, you know, like the, the ideas are very good of Silhouette, but sometimes, you know, the panic kind of started to get towards them and they kind of did end up losing those rounds. Well, sadly, we've lost them from this particular tournament, but I'm really, really hoping that we get to see more from Silhouette in the future because as Kimmy herself mentioned in that interview, the aim is incredible. There's so much potential for this roster. So hopefully we'll see them next showdown. Now we need to take a short break, but I know you guys are going to want to stick around because this is the series we have been waiting for. It is, of course, CLG Red versus Dignitas. Do not go anywhere unless it's to get a cup of tea. <laughs>